resources, oxygen not included. Uh, we are going to embark on a colony on an asteroid with our wonderful D&D characters. <clears throat> so the asteroid I have picked for our journey is Oceana, because it's been kicking my butt on the regular. Let's find some fun traits for our asteroid. Volcanoes, geodes, frozen core, yeah. metal rich volcanoes, lime molds, exposures, magma channels, irregular oil, miscalculate pod location, geoactive and volcanoes. I think that it's going to be a fairly fun thing to explore. First choice we need to make now is our initial duplicates or our initial colonists. Um, so personally, I like to have a couple of diggers and then a researcher. All right, plus seven excavation is good. Immune to food poisoning, which is decent, but they're narcoleptic. So every so often throughout the day, they're going to just like pass out on the ground, unfortunately. That's a trait that I can deal with. Alright, so this person is a yokel, so they can't do researching, um, but that's alright, because we are going to have a dedicated researcher for our colony. And, but they are buff, so they can carry a little bit more as they're moving about. Cannot do cooking errands, but they have increased germ resistance, which is good. All right. Next, we need to name our duplicates, because while these are fine names, um, I do want to have all of our colonists to actually be characters that, or NPCs that we've run into in our various games. I think Joshua is actually going to become Narda. Uh, our researcher is going to be Whistler. And I believe this is going to be Jor. So those are going to be our three initial members. Alright, so we have awoken at our target location, but we are miles underground. Um, we are going to need to establish the colony here and begin mounting efforts to escape. Alright, so let's take a quick look around um, at what we initially have to work with. We've got a decent pocket of water down here that we could kind of combine. We've got some shine bugs already. Plenty of muckroot. Got some water up here as well. That muckroot is drowning in this water if it floods these uh, plants will cause them to uh, die and to turn back into the sea, which isn't a big deal at the moment. So one of the first things we're going to need, of course, is outhouses, because everyone needs to use the restroom at some point. But we don't have any resources right now. Um, you can see that we've got some edible food that is in our ration box right here. First thing, we're going to need to do a little bit of digging. And by digging over here, we'll get to see a little bit more of the bat map and what we have to work with. We've got some salt over there, salt water over there. Okay, now that we've got 
at least a little bit of resources. I can build a ladder kind of in between these two water pockets so I can combine them, I think. So right here. And put a pitcher pump. And then I can actually dig this out so that we can actually utilize it. That might work okay. That way we can get some initial water for our restrooms. It's nice. We've already got a little patch, which hopefully we'll be able to branch later. Okay. Coming outhouse. We'll go ahead and put it back off. And we need a wash basin because we don't want our dupes to have poopy hands. That's just me setting our ration box so that all this muck root will get picked up, hopefully, before our duplicates um, infect them with food poisoning germs. Now, priorities. I am going to have this as a priority six because I need them to get that done. Initial setup of a colony like this is pretty basic. You need some sort of food source, you need an oxygen source, you need toilets because otherwise your duplicates will be all over the ground. Now that they are almost done with that, I will up the priority on these so we can actually get some water to our wash basin. There. We'll tap into this in a little bit later to let it start off gassing some oxygen as well. Ooh, second hatch. Yay! We have a restroom at least. We're about to get water for the wash basins. We will be able to tap over here and get this muck root and uh, do auto harvest for the snow wood so we can get at least some food. But we do need to pick where we're going to have our garden. Ah, we have a little bit more water over here, which is nice. It looks like we're 
looks like the water wasn't deep enough to kill these mealwood. Excellent. Looks like they're going to be getting their feet wet every time they come get water. them drop the water level down low enough that when they come and get water they won't be getting soaking wet. downtime and we don't have water in here yet so when they use the restroom they're not going to wash and they're going to be covered in food poisoning germs. Although I'm going to speed this up a little bit to get them through the night. We'll, um, we should probably check their stats. Uh, last time I played even though I had it set up for plus seven excavation that got transferred over somehow to cuisine. So. Seven, that's good. Seven. For science seven. Excellent. Now if we look at our germ overlay, you can see them running around in disgusting, disgusting germs and getting it all over everything.
it amuses me so much. But it does. And now that they've almost got beds built, I am going to go ahead and set up their research station right next to our printing press so that the light from it will help them work a little faster. And due to where our ladder's at, I'm actually going to put the manual generator and its batteries over here off to the side. start prepping for another duplicate even though we don't have a fourth one yet. sleep on their little cots, but we do not currently have a room bonus up there. No room bonus because of this little block that didn't get made. So it's the wrong size for barracks. However, they are getting a little bit of a room bonus here for the latrine. decent in their main area here. We have a bit of a carbon dioxide pocket, but that's not too big. Now what I want to do is I want to move this ration box into one of the carbon dioxide pockets, but I can't even make that yet. I haven't researched it, so the duplicates don't know how to make it. Or taking a little narcoleptic nap. Seems idle. Not like that. We'll go ahead and let them keep exploring. start our research. And of course, first thing we're probably going to need is some food related stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and go straight into meal prep. And now that that is ready, I am also going to go into priorities and have Whistler's main priority be researching, and Jor and Narga are going to be digging and building. They'll help out with everything else in the colony, but But this will mean that Whistler, who has a better researching skill, will do the majority of the researching and will get done faster. Go ahead and open these doors, because we don't have any shine bugs that will keep our duplicates awake 
in the colony currently. shine bug somehow so it doesn't get into our barracks and keep our, our dupes awake through the night and drop that water down into our main water storage tank. farming complete. We got our algae terrarium, compost, planter box, and our ration box. And it is that time for our principles. Well, we have someone that's interested in building and ranching, but they're loud snorers, so we are going to have to have their schedule sleeping schedule different than everyone else's otherwise that will keep everyone up. Let's see. This sounds dupe. Um, especially since I do want to get into ranching sooner rather than later. So I think I am actually going to leave their name as Meep, as um, that is the name that Scott and I called our miniature dragons in the world, so Welcome, Meep. So, for Meep, then mm, we should be able to start farming soon. So, we'll start you as our farmer, and then excited to be getting his hat. Right. Okay. Meep is going to be completely offset from everyone else's sleep schedule. That way he will not keep them awake. While they're taking their break, uh, I'm thinking of having their mess hall over in this area. Uh, once this is built, it should be in a nice little carbon dioxide pocket right there. That was 
probably a hatch that fell down in the water and drowned while I wasn't watching. So I'm going to do a few things off camera. I'm going to get some more research done and get there. I'm able to have a mess hall, which I'm planning to have over here, and I'm going to have them go out and explore and see what's around us. Anyhow, I will check back in with you guys after a while. Hope you enjoyed this, and um, really quick brief introduction to Oxygen Mountain.